One of the things I noticed, Moxie, looking at everyone's average point. Now, there are four teams right on the threshold. All the teams right now, their average points on the compositions that they particularly chose, even though it's all different, it was around 7 to 12. This is all the weaker compositions for each team. But OUG off spawn versus Wolves. Pull sword on the SS. Gets some nice double Tessa ult. Looking for the parry. Not able to get it. Going to help his teammate with the flank. Able to get fried from behind, though. ZK with the katana denying SS triple charge flank. SS looking down to go on to Wuchen. Sinyu is going to take him down on the Viper. Stone form going to be released onto the Wuchen. Now Wuchen at 1 HP. <laughs> Tries to shift Ferry out of there, but SS with the delayed timing on the LMB able to take him. But BBE coming in with a great timing attack. Picking up OUG and Wolves. Stragglers. Nice play from BBE. Can they get the momentum going? They are a third of the way there. There's still a hope and dream. We still have a lot of Naraka to be played, but going over to mid tab, JDG versus TE. Juggle gonna be taking down Leo. JDG with a huge advantage over all the momentum. The staff's just doing too much work. You get hit by one RMB, you get hit by another RMB. Just juggled forever. Great job from JDG to secure their off spawn, Moxie. Now, I tell you what, if WBG walk with MVP on this and they're going to be kicking themselves for not picking up an extra kill on that last one because they are already across the threshold. They're able to kill a team on drop, pick themselves up six kills, so they're able to kill two teams and put themselves onto 79 points. They are now match point eligible. Unfortunately for them, if they get MVP this round, it still doesn't count because they didn't start the round on 74 already. As KLA Dispatch JDG up in the top, leave the blooms as insurance policy for Realm of Yang, or at least one, no, none of them. They'll be able to grab those ones on up as we get to see WBG with those six kills, free on Sleepwalker, free on Baigay, so at least even amounts of damage coming through from both the Takeda and the Tumulch. As uh, it does look like off of that, they can start to slow down if they so choose. They're going to be loading up, trying to get the Cicada into that golden state of ultimate as quickly as they possibly can. Wolves, in the meantime, look to be alone in Plumed. Doesn't seem like any team has actually started parfing through here. So a lot of loot in the area, which is very good news for this team because they are incredibly low in terms of overall equipment. It is not a golden tier area, and IW as a mode already means that you're going to have a harder time being able to pick up rare loot on the map itself, which is part of the reason why Realm of Yang, Amora's Blessing, is so important to include in your mid-game scaling. And yeah, WBG already up to six kills, keeping the momentum going, OUG at two now. I believe you, WG was on the cusp, right? And now they're yeah, they, just... they started with seventy for eight. They did not start with seventy four. Now they just tapped it in. They're already across, and they're firing on all cylinders on the siphon. Now WBG not really known for their siphon, so a great time to just kind of blow it out of the water instead of just taking like a weaker composition. They have a good chance now fighting against everyone else on their weaker comms to get a nice 20 point game. So it doesn't matter if it goes the distance, they have secured the will and win just by points. Why not double dip? And now we're gonna get Bauda. Triple charge gonna set off, but Yushan does go down. PP with the ultimate. Tessa ult is out. The Yoda ult able to follow up off the Justina freeze. Good job from Kiki and his Yodo to get this going. Now PP oh, trying to try to get res here. He does have Yushin on. He just has to tap dodge and hit ultimate. He's able to battle, not able to re-engage and deny the res. Now Wu Chen is gonna go down. Yaron a little bit with an overextension, and now Bauda wants to back off out of this situation, but Nowhere left to go. All flag round in every direction. They look Jing inside the tent. Able to get the white armor reset. Gonna throw the one charge. Not able to, but in the background, BBE's coming in with the V3 and the Tessa ult. Coming in with the third party. BBE with the great timing. Says now PB on the Yushan getting shredded. Even though he's in Yushan, he can't be staggered. It doesn't mean he cannot be damaged. He absolutely gets blown up right there from BBE. He's Roy Hehe's fan. Now, I've been chasing down the last remnants of the stagger great parry to close it out fat milk with the nunchucks kicking him in the chest letting him know we're here to stay we're not going down and last we're already up to eight kills 31.6 we've seen a 30 bomb go down bbe was absolutely crushing it and they do crush it on their viper only 
five minutes into the game and they're ready up to eight kills hopefully they can keep up this momentum climb up to this leaderboard and be in striking range so possibly getting a match point in two rounds but first wbg they tapped it in they got across scaling up their yushan now oug they do need a couple kills to get to that threshold don't want to go out just yet so oug playing a little bit hastily early on can they go come back to that form where their early mid and late game is absolutely phenomenal double pole sword spear looking real bursty with that setup any amounts of dragon slayer or crowd control coming out from that spear is just going to immediately leave, lead to some chopping blocks now wolves a little bit different in composition we got the staff longsword pole sword a little bit more traditional, a little bit of tech chance, a little bit of stagger, and a little bit of burst. A nice mix coming from them. And looking at BBE, we got the Hong Sword, Dual Halberds, and Fan. The Vietnamese teams love the Fan. It's still one of the most obnoxious weapons to fight against because it has that forward and backwards hitbox. Dual Halberds, also one of the better weapons to play with because it just neutralized so many situations. We're seeing the Jades going down. Transitioning to this mid game, this first Yang, BBE has had a great time starting over all the way in Tang and making their way to Meta, picking up everyone in the south. Their brothers 5 to 1 on the other side of the map. Initially having a very strong Viper Day. Both these teams, really, really strong Viper teams. Hopefully, they can get some going as we transition to this mid game. WBG using the Moonbane already. And KLA, it looks like everyone... Game 1, really, really slow. And it looks mm. like Game 5, really, really slow. As everyone's transitioning to getting over the finish line, we want to be conservative and pick our spots very, very carefully. Interesting, yeah, Moxie. Yeah, everyone is very aware of how close the top two teams are to hitting 74. So I think they're going into this game understanding that WBG and OUG are more than likely going to be hitting that 74 and become match point eligible in the next round. So as a result, everyone is playing, like you said, as conservatively, as safely as possible, so they can put up the maximum amount of points and get as close as they possibly can to 74 points, because chances are this day may not go on any longer, as it is going to be WBG with that Moonbane that they just picked up, dropping it on top of one of those entrances to Yang. It has drawn the focus of DRG. We know that there's going to be a team in the area. WBG wanting to see whether or not they are going to get challenged on this one. No one rising to the fight, at least absolutely stacked in terms of Soul Jades. As well as now we do see DRG coming in. The Yoto F dropped over the portal. WBG still able to get all three of their players safely through and are now going to be taking on BBE, one of those teams who has incredible scaling in terms of that loot. Roy Hee -he with that legendary fund is going to be doing so much damage as by Geiko's aerial to be able to come in with the F gets hit, however, by that Viper F3. The ultimate's coming on through to silence him. They're trying to find a kill onto this Viper, but that damage reduction is so obnoxious. It's immediately followed up by the Tessa V1. Baige now coming in with that ultimate, looking to try and push these players away. Tessa V1 connecting yet again. The enchantment wearing off now once the Witch and TP has been able to carry the bodies of BBE out. Unfortunately for them, they don't have the distance that you have in the open world to try and keep BBE away from WBG. The players get low and they do not get the opportunity to heal and WBG do not even need to see where the Wuchen teleports to to be able to finish off that fight. As in the second realm of Yang, JL is now just cleaning up these players from KLA. TXJ with those nunchucks. Just finding a parry on 217S will be able to finish him off and that's going to be both WBG. Wolves and JL all walking away with lovely buffs, lovely loot, and good scaling insurance policies for them heading into mid-game. Some lovely loot indeed, Moxie. BB, it's always a struggle trying to fight against that Siphon. They open up on the Takeda, but Takeda just has such a great over to bursting the Viper initially, but as I speak, EWG dives in the T, uh, TXJ and JL 
trying to catch them off guard, but they respond with the tripled all everyone transforms like wait you jumping on us on us no we're jumping on you yoda ult's going down and x you just can't touch the ground it gets a hundred to zero by the juggle and now their only chance is to take down txj they can get to him though 14 looking for the one charge carry not able to get it one charge again goes for the double hold able to get txj juggled right now alone but the feria and uh mech Sending down support and Yushan finally joining in, taking him down, and the, the Yang other Yang winning team does get taken down. They do have the Phoenix buff, so they're gonna keep all their loot, keep all their gear, be able to reset and find another place. Great job from JL surviving the ambush right there. Pretty easy solution though. Like if we get ambush, we get surprise. Everyone click the button. <laughs> Click the red button, panic. Everyone hit the button. They consolidate, they focus fire, end up juggling their prio target, and they take it down. Now, BBE unable to keep up their momentum. I respect that they went into Yang on their Viper composition as far as their. I think they've got blooms. Like, they, they, they killed players off spawn on a City of Tang, remember? They do. It looks like they're going in for that, or the blooms. Hemi ult gonna be invested by WBG versus JL. Double, triple parry from TFK, but the shove ends up denying his punish. It doesn't matter though. Everyone's weapon is on the ground. WBG's Baige doing a ton of work here with the Takeda. Has JL against the ropes. Fong trying to fade away with the pull sword, but where can he go? F1 gonna be invested. Nice slam coming out from Baige to continue his pressure. JL does get taken down, but DRG coming in with the Justina all leading, getting a double freeze. A back-to-back -back double freeze into the Temi all. What is this composition? Temi's there, there's an F there. Oh, they end up getting crowd control a little bit, but that third party just so ferocious. So much action going down, Moxie. I mean, Justina V1 followed up by Long, so that is classic Justina. As we're having Kurumi Sand Siphon now off of both of KLA and TEQGG catching Han with the one charge on that pull sword. Goes over to the spit. Oh, gorgeous jump parry. Comes on through. One, two, light confirm as a tease Leo actually backs off the fight to be able to wheel Ballista into view. And as a result, Kaylee are now in full retreat. QGG is going to be able to get the Karumi Tavid to keep himself tops up. And that damage reduction because Aero to come in with the F looking to try and find the lockdown onto one of these players of TE is able to collapse onto LYD. Tries to come with the jump horizontal. Goes for the light twos to push the Kurumi further away. Fades out a little bit of focus coming on through, but LYD does not play into the parry. And as a result, TE get an opportunity to maybe turn this around. They lose LYD, they lose Leo. It's Jess Han. He's sitting. Holding on to these dual blades, just holding on to that focus as much as he can. Over the head of the player, he jumps. Unfortunately, he has to hit the ground at some point. What goes up must come down. That is basic physics and KLA. They see that he has the dual blades and they go, okay, cool. We'll, uh, we'll kill you with that weapon too. Looking at the scoreboard, Moxie, a WBG running away with this on the siphon composition. Everyone else kind of playing their weaker compositions. And WBG capitalizing on this like slow play that we just want to get past the threshold and then we want to bust out our main composition. OUG doesn't, they're still at a very dangerous location. It would be devastating to not get those two more kills to get across the finish line. I could feel a little bit of antsiness coming from that team that if we don't make it, we got to stay, stay calm, stay cool and collected and just continue to play placement. They don't need a lot off this round. They're playing their off off uh, composition. But I've seen you and the crew do super, super well on the Viper. Pop 15 kills at the box. Wolves duking it out. I, well, would... I mean, at the least, they should be able to out-survive another team because we have second Realm of Yangs coming through. They're on a composition that doesn't favor a Realm of Yang fight. As long as they play for safety and a team goes in loses that fight, doesn't have Soul Bloom stashed, uh, and is hit with Yang Depletion, OUG should be able to outlive another team, and the kills that they've picked up currently will multiply into a much better score. True. I, I still feel like Slow and Steady is the name of the game here. We're going to get WBG yeah. versus EWG. 
Lage is going to take this guy on the Cicada, looking for the flank play, looking for the proud target, goes for a bow shot, has Dra Dragon Slayer out, whole sword, and focus slide on enemy EWG's 9. Absolutely devastating by Gay. Parry coming out from 14S. It's not going to matter because he does have the shove jabbing as well. Baige having a tough time doing his job, staying on top of the Takeda. He's getting shoved around. Nice shove, hitting a three-piece right there. But again, nine doing the work onto Baige. The focus slide and the pulse were just too much. The, the dreadful whale coming out. EWG is just scaled out of their minds. What oh. can WBG do? The, Dest the Jades of Destiny just coming out. The ace cards being played. What do you got? We got the trump card of Focus Light, unlosable neutral. You turned your back, Dreadful Whale. Just infinite crowd control coming out from EWG and slowing down WBG's roll. Now, if I'm WBG, it's fine. We got extra credit. We got 12 kills. Now it's time to go grief one of the other top five teams. Oh man, I manifested the Focus Light Raven. I was wondering when we were going to see it. It always is absolutely insane intruders into those realm of things because there's nothing you can do. You can't parry it. You're still going to get stagger locked and immediately the second that someone Focus Lights into you, you know it's not the Focus Light that you have to worry about. It's the follow-up attack that you can do absolutely nothing about because you're already staggered out of parry. There we go. There's our answer to our question. Uh, OUG are indeed playing it slow and steady wins the race. Let all of these rabbits run ahead. And uh, we as the tortoise are going to just bunker up inside a purple bush and let our two kills that we've already picked up get multiplied into something much better so that it carries us across the finish mark that is the 74 points. Especially now because they know that a lot of these teams who took those realm of yangs are going to be hit by yang depletion and since it is second yang Chances are they don't have the soul blooms this time to spare to be able to cleanse that one immediately. So a lot of these teams are going to be getting incredibly aggressive and OUG do not want to get caught in the crossfire. Because like you said, it would be absolute tragedy if OUG went out 72.7 out of the 74 points that they need to pick up to make themselves MVP eligible. 5-2-1, trying to take a fight now up against JDG Tutic coming on in with the stagger connections off of that Yoto V3 looking to lock down Unique but the Tessa V1 is there to save the Wu Chen and the second that the Yoto does not have the ultimate to iframe teleport out of that one he's very quickly pulled down to the earth as WBG and DRG both choosing to res at the same soul altar now go head to head these two teams both have Yang depletion they both know that they have it as well as WBG's Bygate comes in with that Takeda ultimate, still has all four Takeda shoves, is trying to come in with this spear and set up onto some of these players of DRG. Doesn't manage to get frozen by the Justina ultimate. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any kills so far, and these ultimates are about to be running on out. Zping F comes on through. Bygate with one shove left, make that zero has been able to peel space for his team, but has not been able to set up the damage necessary to find a kill until now. Scale Rush connects onto DRG's Moonlight, and everyone doubles on down. WFC dropping that Yoto F now, trying to come on through. Gets hit into stone form. Baige with the F! Manages to capitalize when WFC with that pulse sword looks to turn it onto the Takeda. Over the shoulder, WFC goes directly into the ground as unfortunately WBG cannot sit on their laurels because here comes the third party, KLA and Wolves, both joining the fight. Wolves is going to be diving with the V3 Viper. WBG in a tough position. They're going to have to sacrifice their take Takeda. Baige is going to get taken down by the quick moves from Wolves. There is KLA on the high ground as well. Wolves still has their Wu Chen port down, so they're going to be scooping up this loot, playing it slow. KLA doesn't look like they want to engage in this situation. They want to still play out this end game, get a maximum amount of points. WBG on their exit again. Unfortunately, double V3. They just get double all in and cooked. Now they do get 15 kills. Nothing to scoff out at 90 points with a juicy lead against the rest of the lobby they are at match point but OUG playing it super safe is going to be at match point as well 
BBE versus DRG inside Yang or Shishi with the gold fan looking for the parry. It's gonna get frozen by this Justina and the Lonesome Beam. Borghi backing up, gonna pop the V3. Coming back in, has the Yodo juggled from his Tessa. And my man WFZ goes for a cutscene ride. Gonna get 100 to 0 against the wall. Wu Fort is gonna get invested out. They go on top, but the Yushan is ready to slam in. Wait a second, DRG is bringing back the 2v3. Oh my goodness, we do get a juicy Tessa ult. Can they bring it in? BBE all at 1 HP trying to kite. The half charts jumping our LMB from Yushan able to bring it down. Now it's up to Fatma. He's the only one super healthy. He needs to bring the kiting with DRG. Winch Wuxian with the double hold. But Fat Milk is gonna get the dual blades parry. Gets the uppercut, protecting Roy Shishi. Whew, that was really, really close. BBE is able to clutch it out. And again, we're seeing BBE go in with the Viper Comp and win these Yang fights. They should not be winning these fights, Moxie. Yeah, it's clutch factor. JL has it. BBE definitely has it as uh, Wolves. Let's do a little bit of shopping. We'll get protected by EG with those Wuch and Wind Wolves to make sure that Baida does not try and aggress into them. EWG going to be opening up a Morris Blessing. That's the tumult there. Don't think they were actually able to fully commit the load bar to get that one open, unfortunately for them. Too many teams in the area do show up. Yeah, there it is. Legendary armor still inside as well as... Ah, oh, Blood Rippers. Well, it's not the Flamer. <laughs> I don't think we'll see a kill of Blood Rippers. But anyhow, having the purple focus on your movement is uh, pretty nice in terms of reposition to make sure that you don't get stagger locked. That Morris Blessing going to be unopened currently in solos. You can just open it up in trios. It does have a charge bar that you need to be able to activate for that one to fully open up. And as a result, neither of these teams really wanting to try and paint a target on their back by sticking on that one, especially with the Bane's Breath in the area too. We're getting funneled into a snowstorm as well. I wonder if anyone's been able to pick up the campfire buff Raven, because if not, well, it's not just about getting cozy, it's about making sure that we don't lose rage generation, because once that chill bar goes below 50%, we start losing rage at a very rapid pace. It's all about being cozy in these end games. Now, we started out with nice end games game one, now we're up to 24. Interesting situation with the new rule set that uh, around the threshold point, everyone plays a little bit more conservative. We got something to lose, so everyone plays a little bit safer. This is giving uh, a great opportunity to, for those teams on the bottom half of the leaderboard in the middle to make some big plays. As a lot of the, the really, really strong teams go and hide, they're able to find more fights because these teams are unwilling to fight. And we saw WBG on their rotation out. They take that initial fight and they're trying to get out. They get double V3'd by teams lower on the leaderboard they end up getting picked off now OUG they need to get across here every every second means so much you see them with the uh, the blue armors they're just kiting through trying to stay alive to make sure that they get get this last but they're so close to that 74 point mm -hmm. threshold that 73.4 it's just really really tense really really cool they got campfire though like that's why they kited through one of them hit campfire and everyone just <laughs> run after them they got the coziness. Now, they got wolves. the coziness. They got all of the rage. It's, it's still going to be that. Wolves also have, uh, have the coziness. We've broken out the s'mores and the hot chocolate. Raven. <laughs> We're about to start singing Kumbaya. Kumbaya in As... this snowy endgame. Did KLA? It looks like everyone was able to get the coziness, denying the debuff. We do have Aurora Burst on KLA, denying a lot of this range pressure. Traditionally, one of I don't really see many end games going down in this particular corner. I can't recall an end game that I personally played and seen one in this little valley canyon with the trees. We got a lot of buttery rocks to deal with. We got a couple trays trees to play off of. This is going to give an advantage to a lot of the Viper teams. There's a lot of mobility for the Wu Chance to put their ports down to go for these great assassin assassination plays going into this end game. We see BBE at 11 kills the dream is still alive boys 11 kills they can they started out the day in second they can bring it back to all the way to second at 36.2 maybe they drop a 20 point 
20 bomb this game and another one next game bring this game back but we will have to see 24 people alive moxie wait they've got double legendary bbe got both morris blessing <laughs> that's the blood riffers like i said purple focus for the viper to be able to avoid taking a lot of uh, poke pressure coming on through 521 unfortunately have been taking all of that poke pressure because wolves have been so mean some tessa like wolves did it and now another tessa is doing it just keeps dropping the v1 time <laughs> so that people just have to either overly commit and push their position too far forward to be able to interact with their own and cancel the enchantment out before the three second window comes out or accept that they're not going to be able to interact with the urn and uh, probably go down in the three second window when everyone in the area notices. I think I got my answer. Wolves did it and JL also did it. No, oh, JL actually didn't because JL don't have a Tesla. They just took advantage of the fact that Wolves got stunned out. And in fact, it's going to happen again. Four Wolves get hit by the Tesla V1. 521's Pampy trying to clear up space with that v3 uh, does manage to collapse on top of egg bbe however steal the kill away from 521 who understand that they're too far out in the open and have to actually utilize the wuchan teleport to reposition it. unfortunately for them it's also not that safe as they still lose a player in the interim as we can see jl's txj doing what txj does best in a as a yoto in a farrier composition getting that v3 We'll be able to break line of sight and get away from that Viper stun as well. As KLA's QGG now with that legendary pole sword starts to put pressure onto the players of Barida, forcing the Wu Chen teleport. Crucially, Raven, OUG is still sitting on two kills in 73.4 points. They get one kill onto Wolf Gem. It puts them above the 74 point threshold. And unfortunately for Wolves, their dream becomes a nightmare as they lose all of their players and go out with 66.8 points. OUG, on the other hand, are more than happy. They do not care what happens next. They've hit the 74 mark. They're going to be match point eligible. They can contest WVG to end the day early on the match after this. JL, in the meantime, still have to play to get all of the kills that they can because they are pretty far away from that 74 mark. They need to get kills. They need to be the last team standing. And KLA are probably going to stand in their way as QDG comes in with that Takeda F, does not find a connection, tries to look for the scale rush to oust BBE fat, uh, fat Milk's position will be able to push him away and this frees up all of that low ground space for KLA to be able to lick their wounds turns into those cannons and keep the pressure up onto all of these players as Baudaz peak what a viper v3 unfortunately for him he cannot follow up any of the damage it finds so much silences onto all of the players but there is just no follow-up from the rest of his team it's JL yet again coming in with a fairy mech this time vvv Takes it himself. Kalos QGG gets to interact with the Tessa V1, sitting in the middle of that Karumi ultimate, so that he just keeps his health entirely intact as they start to lay down the pressure onto all of the teams around. RMB on the fan, Karumi, Tava, Phoenix Blast on the longsword follow up as well. QGG is able to catch JL's one thing in the middle of a blue focus too. So over the shoulder he goes, and now JL's TXJ is just playing for kills. Last hits with the Yoto ultimate and survival points. VVV with the F3 tracks down which target his Yoto is after and finishes off the kill to be able to get the last tag. And as a result, JL go up to 11, make that 12. They're able to take down two, but they do not manage to take down KLA's QGG, who on this Takeda is absolutely stacked. The ultimate is out, two shoves left to his name. He sees the Wuchen teleport. He knows where 521 are going to be serving themselves up on a silver platter for the Furin shoves into the fan RMB. And KLA put themselves 71.7 points. Raven, this is so incredibly close. If they get a last team standing, if they get a couple more kills, they do. They make it. KLA put themselves onto match point eligibility as well. Four players left. KLA have two. BBE with one. Bido with one. Both which ends. Going to be utilizing the TP. Yiran accepting his fate. Trying to go down to the zone. KLA looking to try and find that kill. Will be able to claim it. And that is KLA.